So there are going to be lots of times in your code when you want to repeat something over and over again, and you don't want to be writing the same JavaScript statements multiple times. For example, if you wanted to count from 1 to 10, you could just write out 10 console.logs, changing the number that you're printing out each time. So as we've seen a few times in the course already, if you end up repeating lines of code, there's probably going to be an easier way to do it. And in the case of repeating an action several different times, we have a programming feature in JavaScript called a loop, which allows you to repeat a certain number of statements for a certain number of times. And the two main ways to do this in JavaScript are using the while loop and a for loop. So let's have a look at how we would count from 1 to 10 in JavaScript using a while loop. So we're first of all going to define a variable that holds our starting number. So let's create a new variable called i and assign it the value of 1. Then to define a while loop in JavaScript, we use the keyword while, and then we open some parentheses, and then some curly braces. So inside our parentheses, very similar to an if statement, we need to put a boolean expression. So we need to say we're going to run our loop while this condition is true. So if we said while the value of i is less than 10, this means the code that's inside of the curly braces here until i is greater than or equal to 10 because at that point the boolean expression becomes false and the while loop finishes. So if we wanted to count to 10, you can see on the right hand side that the console.log is indeed repeating, but it's just actually printing out i over and over and again, and if you notice the error message at the top of the page, it's saying that the loop has timed out, because as you can see in the result below it, i is always set to 1, and it's never actually getting any larger. So every time the while loop runs, when we get to the boolean expression of is i less than 10, it's always going to result in true and it will never get to a false state. So to sort that out, we need to make sure that i is increasing in value, so we're going to add 1 to it on each loop that goes round. And we can just do this by incrementing i by 1. And if you remember from one of the previous lessons, we can also shorten this to say i plus equals 1. And you'll notice the output on the right hand side is now just displaying 1 till 10 and we don't get that infinite loop running indefinitely. So we could do the opposite as well, we could count down from 10 to 1. And all we need to do for that is to reverse the boolean expression and set our starting value to 10. And of course we need to make sure that i is getting smaller each time so we're subtracting 1 from it this time. So as you can see, while loops are fairly simple, we just need to make sure that we have a boolean expression available to us and make sure that we've got some kind of terminating condition. And you can put as many statements as you like inside the curly braces, but generally if you're putting in more than a few lines, you might want to break it down into other parts of your program. So now that you understand while loops, let's have a look at how a for loop works. So structurally, a for loop has all the same components as a while loop, organised in a bit of a different and neater way. For example, the first section in the parentheses is let i equals 1, and that's exactly the same as what we did with our for loop, but with a for loop it's actually inside our setup, inside the parentheses. But that's actually our starting condition, and that could be any variable declaration that you like. But it's common to use i or index just to keep track of how many times the for loop has run through. The second part of the for loop inside the parentheses is the boolean expression. So this is exactly the same as what we had in our while loop as well. And it's basically saying that the loop will run whilst this condition is true. And the final part inside of the for loop setup is the modifier to make sure we don't get one of those infinite loops. So with the while loop, this was actually inside of our statements, but it's actually included inside of the for loop setup. So it makes it easier to create a loop that will run for a certain number of times. So if I actually get rid of the while loop now so we can see the output just from the for loop, you'll see it only counts up to the number 9. And that's because when the value of i gets to 10, the statements inside of the curly braces in the for loop don't actually run. So we can fix that quite easily just by saying, in our condition, is i less than or equal to 10. And it will actually run that final time when i is actually equal to 10. So now you've seen while loops and for loops, when would you use each one? Well, generally a for loop would be used when you know the amount of repetitions that you need to do. Uh, for example, you might have a certain number of items in an array that you need to loop through. Or similar to this, you might be counting up to a certain number. And when you do know the definite end condition, then a for loop makes sense because it's easier to write and easier to see what's going on. A while loop, however, is quite useful when you don't know what the end condition is. A simple example would be taking some user inputs and only kind of finishing the loop when they enter a false value. 
or a more complex example might be where you're reading from a buffer or a stream and you don't know when the result of that is going to end. But it is useful to know both types so take some time now to go and practice writing both for and while loops. And as mentioned you can put any type of statements inside of those loops so it doesn't have to be just counting up to 10. In the next lesson we'll learn how to combine loops with using other data structures like arrays.